Hello, Carlos Cannon here, and I'm going to do part two on 50 years of cannabis discrimination, the war on cannabis. Now, this is my story, so I'll begin at the beginning. I started smoking cannabis at the age of 12. Now, then it was uh, the Vietnam War that I was looking at all through my high school career. Is, am I going to go to this war, or am I not? And so, it was a big decision. So I decided, well, in the meantime, I'll just smoke as much pot and party as long as I can till I have to register for the draft. So all through high school, I had this hanging over my head that I was going to ha maybe have to go to war. So I became a pot smoker and I started uh, my first business at high school helping my friends with cannabis. I became a cannabis activist. So Normal started and I volunteered to work for Normal. The only problem was when I started registering people to vote on the cannabis initiative in the 70s, I was pursued by undercover officers to the point that they put me out of business basically. And I made a big decision in my life that I didn't want to uh, make my living in the cannabis trade at that time. So I went into mainstream business and figured, hey, as long as I could do my thing legally, no one's going to bug me for smoking a little pot. Okay, so now it's 50 years later. So where are we? Cannabis is still illegal, federally, a class one drug. So in the state of California, they're making it legal. So what does that really mean? Does that really mean that it's legal when uh, the federal government could pursue people in spite of the laws in California? And why should the people in the cannabis industry comply to the laws in California if they're going to be pursued federally? Well, when the vote came down and California had 60% of the people who voted to legalize cannabis is set a precedence. Calif cannabis has not only become legal, it's become a political force. With 60% of people agreeing that cannabis should be legal, the cannabis industry and the people that believe in cannabis can now move on and spread their influence in other ways to help change the federal law. Volunteers are now working at the Cannabis Love Network at CannabisLove.net to put together a series of brochures and literature that can be distributed in dispensaries and by anybody that wants to help to make cannabis federally legal. The cannabis industry in California will never rest till it is not a Schedule One drug and is finally decriminalized. It will affect the ability of California to regulate and control cannabis because money could be seized from the state government or shops can be closed down by uh, federal squads of goons that will come to your place and just shut you down. So everybody has a vested interest to move forward and not just take a deep breath and think that cannabis is legal all of a sudden, because it's not. It's still federally a class one drug. Now the information at CannabisLove.net will be downloadable in the form of uh, a PDF file so you'll be able to print out and distribute. This is what people need. They need to become more aware and they could only become more aware if you bring it to their attention of how Californias can overturn the federal law.